Hello everyone, just want to give you a little update on the Ozempic journey. After 13 days, I've lost 20 pounds and things are definitely going really well. For today's video, I thought I'd talk a little bit about the things that I've been eating, the things that I've been learning, and some of my plans for the future. When my Ozempic got approved, I wasn't fully prepared for the new dietary requirements. Fortunately, I love batch cooking and had more than a few things in the freezer to help me get started. In addition, I bought 12 pounds of boneless chicken breast and cooked all of it. For batch cooking, I love using my Blackstone griddle top, but I also enjoy using my Ninja air fryer oven as well. I used it for this jerk chicken, which was delicious. On the griddle, I made two different types of chicken, this amazing buffalo and an Asian-inspired dish with a sauce similar to what you would get with like a chicken and cashew or a Kung Pao chicken. Everything turned out wonderful. By the way, a little side note, I will definitely be doing a video in the future showing you from beginning to end how I make some of the most amazing, juicy and tender pork and chicken. All right, now you've seen some of what I prepped, now here's what I ate. My main go-to's for snacks have been popcorn and lettuce wraps. Now this picture is from years ago. I didn't do anything near as fancy as that over the last several days. When I was feeling a bit hungry and it wasn't time for a meal, I just grabbed a piece of romaine lettuce, a little bit of cold chicken, and I wrapped them up and I was good to go. The buffalo chicken was absolutely awesome for this. As far as carbs go, I went without anything processed. I picked a few things, peanuts, shredded wheat, brown rice, popcorn, and triscuits. I'm sure I'm going to add more things to my list later on for OK carbs, but that's what I worked with for the last several days. Over the years, I've used soup as my vehicle for getting extra vegetables in my diet. At times, I've struggled with getting enough of them, and I found using vegetable purees in my soups was the perfect way to get past that issue for me. It also really helped me get started on Ozempic because I had a ton of healthy soups in the freezer. That said, I wanted to make sure I had plenty of soup for the future, so I made up a new batch. Also, I made a quick video on it. Feel free to click that link above and check it out. While it didn't necessarily make for an Instagram-worthy photo, I promise you it was delicious, especially after adding in a little bit of brown rice and chicken. Another great thing I had in the freezer was this amazing tomato sauce with beef and pork, better known as a bolognese. I spent six hours on a Sunday afternoon making this a while back and had a bunch in the freezer. I've often said this is so delicious it could be a meal in itself. Well, for the last several days, it became one. I make this in a very traditional way, which could use a few tweaks to be a bit more healthy. Typically, you add in your ground meat right after cooking off the carrots, celery, and onions. Now, I'll probably tweak this a little bit, do the meats first so I can strain off some of the fat. And I'll probably increase the amount of sofrito, the carrots, the onions, and the celery. I absolutely love Italian food, but on this diet, I'm willing to sacrifice the pasta to have the best part, the meat sauce. I'm sure in future months when things are going real well, I'll probably allow myself occasionally just a little bit of pasta and a glass of wine. But for now, I'm just really happy that I can eat this on Ozempic without having any bad reactions. For me, that was huge. And you definitely don't feel like you're on a diet when you're eating something like this. Well, I plan to stick to mostly lean proteins, chicken and pork loin. I did pick up a ham last week. With prices the way they are at the grocery store, I wanted to take advantage of the Easter specials, and I am definitely going to be using this sparingly. So far, I've only used just a little bit of it. I've made some egg whites and ham for breakfast a couple times this week, and I'm absolutely looking forward to using that ham bone to make a mock potato soup with cauliflower. My biggest key takeaway from the last couple weeks is that soup really helped me. I had a ready to go base in the refrigerator all but a couple days. And on the days when I had it, I'd wake up in the morning sometimes and have a thin broth. I'd add some brown rice or chicken in the afternoon or evening for a hearty meal. Sometimes I made a small amount for a midday snack. And sometimes right before bed, again, I'd go with a thin broth loaded with great nutrients. I definitely recommend checking out my last video if you wanna see how I make my soups so versatile, so easy to customize on the day of. Over the last couple of weeks, I haven't had a lot of cravings for the types of foods I used to eat, but I did on a couple of those days. And those were days when I didn't have soup in the refrigerator. Bearing that in mind, I am gonna increase the amount of soup I have available, I'm gonna increase the variety, and I'll be making some videos showing you how I do it, so stay tuned. Now, speaking of plans for the future, I'm gonna to have to put the old mad scientist cap on and do some experiments. One of the first things I want to tackle is artificial sweeteners. This is a rabbit hole in itself. The more I try to find the perfect solution, the more I think maybe I should just work to eliminate my sweet tooth altogether, whether it be with real sugar or sweeteners. 
But that said, there are certain things in which I'd like to make that do require a hint of sweetness, and I'd like to find some alternate options versus just using sugar, brown sugar, honey, or corn syrup. Within my first few experiments, I'll likely be working on ways to make a sugar-free version of sesame, general sauce, and orange chicken. In addition, I'd like to find a way that doesn't require deep frying, but still gets you that crispy coating on the outside. Another thing I plan to do over the next week or two is start using my Ninja Creamy more often. It's amazing for so, so many things, not just ice cream, sorbets, sauces, and more. Alrighty, well, I've taken up enough of your time with this video, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up. Thank you for swinging by today, and if you'd like to see more content like this, please hit that subscribe button. And if you think others could benefit from this content, you can definitely help me out by sharing, liking, and commenting. Get that YouTube algorithm spreading the word. Have a great day, everybody.